boys and girls. This is Miss Vance with Advance with Miss Vance. And this week, we have been studying about hippos and an African oxpecker. Our story this week was Friends Stick Together, and it is about the friendship between a hippo and the bird. The bird eats the ticks off the hippo, and and the hippo doesn't have any pest on it anymore. So I thought I would read another hippo story to you. But this one is a non-fiction book. That means that it is a true story. And it is called Saving Fiona, the story of the world's most famous baby hippo. And it is written by Thane Maynard. So here is our title page, and you can see our title, and our author, and our publisher is Houghton Mifflin. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is a circle with a C up here that has 2018, which means this book is two years old. That is our copyright date. And it says, This book is dedicated to all the members of Team Fiona who worked tire tirelessly to save baby Fiona. You showed the world the incredible commitment, teamwork, and tenacity it takes to give animals the care they deserve. So this is what we call the dedication page. That's who the book is dedicated to. Oh, look at the little baby Fiona. This is Fiona. She is a baby hippopotamus. But not just any baby hippopotamus. She's the first premature hippopotamus to be raised by humans. And she is a survivor. This is her story. There had not been hippos at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden for 20 years. People really love hippos. Their big round bodies and storybook appeal made them the most requested animal at the zoo. And when the zoo planned to build a new African animal habitat, making a space for the hippos was a top priority. One thing hippos need is water. Lots and lots of water. The water in the 70,000 gallon hippo pool in Hippo Cove is 100% rainwater, collected and saved every time it rains in Cincinnati. To keep the water clear is so visitors are always able to see the hippos from all sides, the zoo makes use of the biggest pool filter in town. Look at him. <laughs> so awesome. The first residents of Hippo Cove were 17-year-old B.B. and 34-year-old Henry, and they arrived in 2016. B.B. had only lived with female hippopotamuses. Henry was the first male hippo she'd ever seen. Henry had lived with many hippos, male and female, and he had even fathered some babies. Everyone hoped that B.B. and Henry would get along and have some babies of their own. There they are. Not long after the pair was introduced, there was good news. Bibi and Henry were going to be parents. Scientists from the zoo's research team conducted the world's first ultrasound on a Nile hippopotamus. Because hippos have a thick layer of fat to insulate them from their life in the water, nobody was sure if the ultrasound would even work. But a scientist slid under Bibi's huge belly, and sure enough, you could see a spinal cord and even little baby hippo feet. The zoo staff continued to monitor Bibi throughout her pregnancy, and soon there would be a baby hippopotamus at the Cincinnati Zoo. Look, that's the ultrasound. You see the little foot in the spine? I love that so much. But sometimes things happen too soon. Bibi's caregivers noticed that though it was two months early, Bibi was acting as though she was going to give birth. And she had no appetite. 
and she was swimming continuously and doing barrel rolls, and her body showed signs of labor. And they rushed to her area in Hippo Cove where they got a big surprise. Even though B.B. wasn't due to give birth until March, lying there on the ground was the littlest hippo anybody had ever seen. It was January the 24th, 2017. See that baby? So sweet. At only 29 pounds, the baby hippo was about the size of a heavy football. Hippos are normally three times that size at birth and very active. In the wild, hippos are born in the water and can climb right up onto their mom's back. They even nurse underwater. This little hippo had the entire team shocked. Being a preemie, the baby just lay there. And she was too weak to stand and certainly couldn't climb. At a first-time mother, Bibi looked at the baby with mild curiosity. See the baby. He's so tiny. There was no time to waste. The zoo's care team jumped into action and they picked up the baby and started to warm her with thick blankets. And everyone had lots of questions. What do we feed her? Should we put her in the water? How do we make her stronger? How would a hippo mom take care of a premature baby in the wild? Nobody had ever raised a premature hippo. If Fiona was going to survive, everybody who would be taking care of her would have to learn everything one day at a time. Look at precious Fiona. She's sleeping. A team of specialized caregivers was assembled, including the zoo's hippo keepers, a nursery staff of baby animal experts, and an animal health team of veterinarians, veterinarian technicians, and the zoo nutritionist. Hashtag Team Fiona was committed to saving the baby hippo's life, whatever it took. And after talking it over, they decided to name the female baby hippo Fiona. After the lovable princess with the wiggly ears from the movie Shrek. She kind of looks like Fiona. <laughs> the zoo decided to share Fiona's struggles with the world via social media. And everyone soon fell in love with the little hippo. And they rooted for her and sent support and positive vibes her way when she needed them most. Hashtag Team Fiona grew and grew. Uh. <laughs> so adorable. The team knew that someone had to stay with the baby around the clock, literally holding her to keep her warm. A special area in the hippo barn was set aside for the baby to live in until she began to grow. And the building had a heated floor, and the heat in the room was cranked up to 98 degrees to make sure she didn't get chilled. Even her little pool became a hot tub filled with water of nearly 100 degrees. <coughs> the first dilemma was getting Fiona to nurse, and as is the case with all infant mammals, it would be best for Fiona to drink her mother's milk. But Bibi is huge, over 3,100 pounds, and tiny Fiona couldn't reach her to nurse. The team found the biggest breast pump on the market, but that idea didn't work. <coughs> Excuse me. So a scientist slid under Bibi again, just like they had when they first saw Fiona in an ultrasound and hand-milked her like a cow, and the team was able to get some milk. <coughs> Fiona was able to drink a little of Bibi's milk, giving her important antibodies from her mother, and the zoo's nutritionist sent milk samples off for analysis to the milk repository at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., and they learned for the first time that hippo milk is much higher in protein <coughs> and lower in fat than human milk. So every day, 
a special formula was mixed up and heated for Fiona to drink. But it was difficult to keep Fiona interested in feeding, and sometimes she would have a difficult time breathing. You can imagine how much Fiona did not like the oxygen tube or cannula in her nose. Oh my goodness. <coughs> the zoo's nursery keepers know that the keys to raising a healthy baby animal are taking sure they're making sure that the baby gains weight and stays hydrated. At about one month old, Fiona wasn't looking so good. She didn't have much energy, and she wasn't eating, and even worse, she wasn't keeping down what little food she did eat. It takes a village to raise a premature hippo. Someone on the zoo staff shared that when her own daughter was sick and needed fluids, her hospital called in a specialized vas vascular access team to find her tiny veins, and her daughter recovered. So... When the zoo reached out to the Cincinnati Children's Hospital, they sent their special VAT nurses right over to put in a hippo IV. It took a couple of tries because Fiona pulled the first one out, but eventually the IV stayed in for a week and Fiona was finally well hydrated and she started gaining weight and becoming more active. Look, I did it. Fiona had turned a corner. Fiona began putting on two or three pounds a day and graduated two more pool sizes as she grew. And once she was a few months old, she began living in the area adjacent to her mother and father so the family could begin bonding. And at this stage in her young life, Fiona still spent much of her time with her keepers and other members of Hashtag Team Fiona who would swim with her and play with her to give her some exercise and feed her bottles of specially formulated, prepared formula. It was the only way to keep her healthy. They really love that Fiona. The team was encouraged by Fiona's progress, but at the same time, everyone was worried about the risk involved in reuniting her with Bibi and Henry. After all, the parents weighed over 7,000 pounds combined, and Fiona was so little. Her caregivers and the zoo's mammal curator worked up a step-by-step -step plan for Fiona, and she began to learn by learning to push off the bottom of the big indoor pool, chaperoned by keepers in case she couldn't navigate the deeper water or get to the surface to breathe. She's sticking her tongue out at you. <laughs> then Fiona started spending time with BB indoors, giving them a chance to get to know each other better without the risk of water. Fiona did amazing things with BB, such as exploring her mouth, which made everyone a bit nervous. And BB was providing proving to be a great hippo mom. The world celebrated these milestones right along with Fiona's care team, and people couldn't get enough of the videos and photos that the zoo shared via social media. They demanded a daily hashtag Fiona fix. <laughs> She's becoming a superstar. <laughs> the next big hurdle was the outdoor pool, where the water is nine feet deep, and little Fiona was less than two feet tall. And even though hippos spend all day in the water, resting and staying cool, they can't actually swim. They are so dense that they would sink right to the bottom. Instead, they walk along the bottom of rivers and pools and propel their bodies to the water's surface to breathe. An adult hippo can hold its breath for about five minutes, but Fiona's lungs were not developed enough to do that. So at first, Fiona would go out with her keepers, which was as much fun for them as it was for her. Hippos are built for a life in the water, and the keepers soon saw that Fiona was no exception. She loved the pool.
And then came the big day everyone had looked forward to with a little sadness. When Fiona was about four months old, it was time to let her explore the big pool with B.B. This would mean the end to the daily swimming and contact with her keepers, who had raised her since her unexpected beginning. And Fiona did great with her mom and had fun in the pool, playing and bouncing around underwater every day. It was clear that her keepers missed her more than she missed them, which is a good thing since she will spend her life with the hippos, not people. There's her and her mama. And the grand finale was the family reunion when Henry, Bibi, and Fiona started spending time in the pool together. Fiona continued to play and be a very active little hippo. By the time she was six months old, she weighed over 400 pounds. Sometimes Fiona settles down in the shallow end of her pool, staying cool while she takes a nap. And everyone at the Cincinnati Zoo agrees that we've learned a lot from Fiona, and we feel like we are experts on hippo ultrasounds, hippo milk, and everything else you need to know to raise a premature baby hippo for the first time. But, mostly, we learn that love carries the day and makes the impossible possible. Fiona taught us all to never give up. All right, here, this is, uh, at the end of it, it tells about hippos. And there are two species of hippopotamus, the Nile hippo, which is what Fiona was, and the pygmy hippo, and they both live in Africa. Pygmy hippos are much smaller, weighing about 500 to 600 pounds, and are very rare and come from limited forested areas in West Africa. So they live right about there. And Fiona and her family are Nile hippos, the big kind, and they can grow super huge. Female hippos are typically between 3,000 to 4,000 pounds, and males can weigh up to 4,000 to 5,000 pounds. Sometimes male hippos can reach 7,000 pounds, but that's exceptionally big. So, um, here's the Nile. Hippos on the Nile River. A group of hippos is called a bloat. A word hippopotamus comes from the Greek word that means river horse even though its closest relative is a whale, not a horse. Hippos are built for life in the water. They appear so big because they actually have a thick layer of fat under their skin that insulates them like a wetsuit, since they spend all day submerged in the water. Also, like many aquatic animals, hippos have their eyes, nose, and ears all on top of their heads so they can breathe and use their senses while submerged. Hippos once lived in most of Africa except the Sahara Desert. Today, Nile hippos don't have as much room because there are so many more people. But they still live in a wide range of protected areas, national parks, and other wetland and river areas in east and southern Africa. Can be very dangerous if you come upon a wild hippo. Hippos have special mucus glands that secrete a red oily fluid that protects their skin from sunburn and drying. Hippos can open their mouths 150 degrees wide, about three times wider than humans can. Ah! A male hippo's tusk grow up to one and a half feet long. Hippos can run faster than humans, reaching speeds of up to 18 miles per hour. Hippos are herbivores, which means they only eat plants. Hippos appear friendly, but they can be dangerous. A note from Thane Maynard, the author. In my 40 years in the zoo field, I have never seen such massive interest and in an outpouring of love and encouragement for one animal like I have seen for Fiona. Some of it is her saved from the brink story, 
and some is due to social media, but everybody who knows her will tell you that there really is something special about Fiona. She is one of, one of a kind and a special symbol of hope to people of all ages all over the world. So sweet. Fiona celebrates her first birthday. <laughs> There's Fiona with her mom and dad. Henry and Bibi. I hope that you have enjoyed saving Fiona as much as I have. And that you enjoyed Friends Stick Together. And I hope that you do have a friend. Um, whether they are just like you or totally opposite of you. I hope that you have a great week, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.